Hey everyone, this is Kit Cabello with Hard Lens Media, and I have a special exclusive interview for all of you. As some of you may know, uh, especially if you've been with Hard Lens Media in the early days when we were on radio and television, uh, I am a huge supporter of third parties. I believe that everyone should have a voice. I believe personally the United States should have a parliamentary system. That means also included controversial statement, including the Democrats and Republicans, but we <laughs> got to break that system and have a conversation. But we need to talk about third parties and why they're significant. Other democracies have them, and we don't. So joining me here is filmmaker and also uh, independent uh, independent filmmaker and journalist, as well as commentator, uh, Brad Leo Lyon. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here at Hard Lens Media. We do appreciate uh, you being on our show, and you're actually, actually making a documentary. So, uh, Brad, for our viewers and subscribers, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your uh, filmmaking career and uh, really really, wh why right now uh, it's, it, is it an important time to talk about third parties? My pleasure. And first of all, thank you guys very much for having me, especially during a time frame in which I am making a film that we're running a campaign for. When you're running a campaign, anytime there's a exposure, it's definitely highly appreciated. Uh, to answer your question, I've been doing this for uh, full time, uh, going on 15 years or more now. Uh, I've uh, been a producer on over 30 feature films and TV series. I've directed over a dozen movies and probably worked on uh, or at least credited on uh, 50 to 75 films in general. And I'll be honest with you guys, uh, your audience, yourself. I'm not typically the guy who's doing political movies. Mm. There's uh, no question about it. I'm normally a horror movie and a college comedy guy. <laughs> the, the situation, though, in this particular case was uh, the message mattered, you know, where we just dealt with an election where we had two major candidates that the majority of their own party didn't even like. But, you know, they're caught in that whole landscape where in their minds, they really only had a choice between, you know, what they believe would be the lesser evil. And it's not necessarily that I even believe either is necessarily evil in their own right. I sure I believe a lot of people set out to try and do good. The thing is, they're doing good that they believe in mentally. You know, they, they're pursuing their own, you know, great path. Uh, <laughs> but if you look at a lot of villains in, uh, in the movie world, you know, every great villain actually believes he's actually the hero of his own story. You know, we've seen that time and time again, as well as the propaganda of, well, you got to vote for the lesser of two evils. But at the end of the day, when you vote for the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil. And as what we're seeing right now firsthand, I mean, the old boss is gone. Here comes a new boss. He's just the same as the old boss. Nothing, <laughs> yeah. at least according to Joe Biden, nothing will fundamentally change. So my question to you is, uh, when you decide to start working on talking about third parties, covering third parties, and, you know, the various individuals that are part of, let's say, the Greens, Libertarians, or any other third parties that are here in the United States, what kind of pushback did you get? Because usually what we see on corporate media as well as other people who have larger platforms and that is don't waste your time with third parties third parties can't go anywhere i mean it's this is this is not important why are you wasting your time on this what kind of pushback did you get when you told people hey i'm doing this project on third parties you know i've done maybe a dozen podcasts on this subject recently and interestingly enough you're one of the first hosts to actually ask me that question and it's a really a personal answer for me because Nowhere, perhaps more so than in the entertainment industry, are we more greatly affected by letting our political feelings known. Uh, and this isn't just the aspect of the fact that, you know, L.A., where we're centered or California in general, mm -hmm. you know, it's a highly blue state. Uh, a lot of people in the entertainment world are hardly uh, strong Democratic voters. And, and, you know, I realize I am walking the thin ice as I as I answer this, but I'm just going to give you the most blunt answer I can. It was hard. It was hard making the choice to become public on it. I had to really, really make a decision inside that the message mattered more than what happens with my career, because my career is going to take a punch to the chin. What, what little one I may have to the to the average person, because it's one thing to publicly say I'm a Republican or one thing to say I'm a Democrat. And by doing so, you're cutting off roughly, you know, 30 percent of America either way you go. Not 50 percent, because there's a lot of independent voters out there. There are third party supporters out there. But regardless, you're automatically cutting off a, a portion of your audience. But when you come out and say, hey, I support third parties, I support everyone having a voice. Suddenly, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people on both sides of the big aisle saying, well, hold up here. 
we, we don't know about that at all. It's one thing for you to go red or blue. It's whole another thing saying, you know, there should be more options, especially from the political aspect from the, from um, politicians themselves who interact in the entertainment world, because their lives are about job security. It's not really about the advancement or progress of, of America. It's about keeping themselves reelected. So they're making money and having lobbyists pay their bills and sitting on boards, making a whole bunch of money. And it has directly impacted me because not only did I get, you know, negative feedback from my own personal fan base and audience, I have most of my feature films and television work are comprised of a small group of investors, a great team of good individuals who like to work together and produce films at a certain budget rate so that we can simply make a product and uh, be profitable. Uh, I rely on those investors. Those v investors are the people that enabled me to produce content. And sadly, we lost a couple because I made this choice. Matter of fact, most recently, I uh, this week, I uh, <laughs> spoke with a, a team I've been working with for a few months now to uh, direct a film for them in 2021. And I was just given an ultimatum, uh, hey, you know, step back away from this film. It's not good for our movie. We don't want any potential uh, negative political feedback from our director being a director of such a film. Wow. And I had to sit there and I admit, I'll even tell the audience, it took me a few seconds before I looked him in the eye and say, Hey, I can't do that. Um, and he, you know, his argument was like, we're paying you a lot more than, than this film. I'm like, that's right. Because I'm not getting paid for doing Lutz party. I am doing it because I care about the message. And so as I sat there and, I, and I, I dealt with that and I had to digest that, I had to say, you know, the message has to be more important. We have to be willing to sacrifice ourselves if we ever want the change we want. Quite often, we're willing to be social media warriors, post something on our Facebook or our Twitter, share a few memes, be part of that war and think we're actually making change. But the reality is we're not. No one cares about a few social media posts. Those posts rarely change the world. What changes the world is action. And I had to decide if I was going to be a man of action or just be a man of words. All right. I want to ask you just one more question. Then we're going to focus on your film as well as uh, your campaign on Indiegogo. Uh, do you think in many ways a lot of people are comfortable with the propaganda that we have a two-party system that we're so used to being told, well, you got to vote for Team Red or Team Blue. Anything else is, I guess, heresy, heretical. <laughs> you shouldn't do it at all. Um, how, do, how do we break this uh, propaganda that a lot of people on the left and on the right are willing to accept and embrace? Because, again, we, we don't have any choices, but yet other democracies have these choices. So quite often the common traditional voter is comfortable with this primarily because that's what they hear. That's what they're digesting on a daily basis. You know, it's a political party's job in terms of the people at the top to make sure their party's successful. Mm -hmm. So their job is to do whatever they need to maintain that success rate. So quite often that's simply suppressing the mentality of your own constituents. It's about feeding them whatever it takes to keep them intertwined in your community. Wow. So it's not that a lot of these people wouldn't necessarily be open to it or support it is that the only thing they're hearing is that this is their only choice. And every now and then when they do hear the occasional third party supporter or the rare piece of media that's, you know, contrary to that thought frame, they'll go over and they'll look at their media and try and find their point of view. But because typically as a third party, so little effort is spent on the media itself to create a quality message mm -hmm. uh, with high production value that can counter the the big budget and high production value of Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. that they'll take a quick look at and they'll think, wow, if, if this is all their message really is, if this is the quality of their message, even if it's not the words, but simply the, the quality of the production, they'll lose interest instantly because all of a wow. sudden they're saying, this is the best that third party can offer. I mean, that's part of what Let's Party is about. It's about giving a high production value film back to, mm -hmm. so that not only are we giving third parties a voice, but we're trying to give them a high quality voice. So we have counter media that simply provides factual evidence and reality. Mm -hmm. We're not talking to our third parties, uh, constituents. We want their support, but 
they already have heard the message. Mm -hmm. And that's half our problems with the campaigns anyway. They use the same method that traditional campaigns use every day. Traditional campaigns don't go out and try and win new voters. They don't actually have to. They have 70, 80, 90 plus million registered voters. So their job isn't to go win new voters. If I'm a campaign manager of a Democratic candidate, my job is simply to motivate Democratic voters to show up mm -hmm. and hopefully undermine Republican voters to just demoralize them a bit so that they don't show up in as large of numbers. Mm -hmm. It's not to ch change their perspective. It's not to have my candidate have a great platform and come out here and care about the other person's voice. Right. Just get the people who are already there. Meanwhile, often third parties do the same. Third parties are thinking, well, let's, I'm a libertarian, let's say, and I'm a libertarian with a libertarian candidate, so I'm going to say, come on, libertarians, we're going to show up to the polls, we're going to win. But that's 600,000 registered voters. Last time I checked, 600,000 isn't bigger than 90 million. And that's what we do wrong as a third party. We don't do what the main parties forgot to do, and that's care about the other voter. We don't mm -hmm. reach out to the Democrats and Republicans and say, hey, we want to hear your voice too. We want you to matter. And guess mm -hmm. what? Right now, you don't matter to your own party. All mm -hmm. they care about is freaking you out to make sure you vote for them. They don't care about hearing what you need or want. I mean, right. heck, look at the $600 stimulus for Pete's sake. What yes. the heck is $600 supposed to provide? Agreed. The, the <laughs> average cost of an apartment in LA, a two bedroom apartment is $260 per this week. Right. $600 and, and six hundred dollars doesn't do anything at all. And I don't mean, but again, again, we're 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 all still in shock at just how they assume that six hundred dollars is going to last us. Where in fact, again, at the end of the day, Trump, you know, this Congress got outlefted by Trump when he gave them one when he gave us one thousand two hundred dollars way back in March. And again, this is madness and stupidity that we're that we're stuck in this. So let's actually focus now on third parties. So in the early days of Hardlands Media, we interviewed third party candidates from green to libertarians, even interviewing political groups like DSA and Socialist Alternative. And even going into the selection cycle, we've interviewed Howie Hawkins, many of the Green Party candidates in that primary as well, the libertarian candidates, uh, as well as Mark Charles, who was an independent candidate. Uh, what was your interaction in regards to trying to set up interviews with third parties? Did you get any kind of pushback? Were they nervous around you? Because what we've seen firsthand, especially when we had to talk to third parties, is that there is a lot of guards th that are up because of the constant smearing from corporate media. Well, right off the bat, before I even answer that, please, any candidate who happens to be listening to this, future candidate for 2024 or smaller office in 2022 or even your local office in a year, stop that mentality. You're a candidate Thank you. that's supposed to be for all people. You mm. have to be open. We have to be transparent. That's what's wrong with our, our legislators to begin with. We're not transparent. Look, you're the voice of everyone in your particular, particular region or mm. district. You have to be the leader for everybody. So you've got to be forthright. If they've got a question, give them an answer. You, <laughs> but what's also important is don't worry about just being your perspective. Mm-hmm. A great leader, it's not about what I care about. When people ask me, well, what's, you know, your political means? What party do you support? What party I support doesn't matter, especially when it comes to this film, because what matters is trying to help everyone have a voice. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, guys, candidates, men and women out there who want to make a change or gain active, be active, not just by showing up and saying, I want to be voted for. Right. Give them a platform and a reason to vote for you and listen to the people who are against you because they're not really against you. They just want a better America and they have their own view of how to get there. Exactly. So so then let's focus. Actually, uh, so so let's actually focus back on, on, on the question, though, because did you get any kind of pushback? Or did you see any kind of people who had their guard up because you obviously not being part of the media, but you hear you are bringing your documentary, your film crew in to interview these individuals, whether they're Greens or Libertarians or Independents? Did you get any kind of pushback? What was your interaction with various third parties? Can you go into detail for that for our viewers and subscribers? Well, let me start by uh, prefacing the fact that this movie isn't just about providing Libertarian Green Party ASL members, um, mm. giving them a voice by being in front of the camera and talking about their perspectives. Our film is more about simply factual evidence. It's about informing traditional voters 
that there are certain things, structures placed by the Republican and Democratic parties that work against third parties and work to suppress third parties. It's not that we're stuck in a two party system. Mm -hmm. It's just that Republicans and Democrats campaign people and marketing people mm -hmm. are literally just trying to do their job. And that's beat the beat the rivals and to beat the rivals they've got to suppress the rival so they're working to suppress their parties you just have to open up and listen and realize there are options and if the only voice you're hearing is the person above you in the party saying there's not they're probably a little biased now throughout that process of course we do want to give voices to candidates we want those candidates to be able to express what happened to them you know perhaps we even interviewed or set up future interviews with you know, presidential and vice presidential candidates who once even got arrested simply trying to participate in debates. Right. If you're not mistaken by any means, you're not wrong. There was a lot of pushback, a lot of fear. You know, what would the message be? I'm not worried about giving my voice a chance to be on this camera. I'm worried about the camera, you know? It's, mm -hmm. And if you're a politician, you can't worry about that. You have to be in front of the camera. You have to be willing to, to take questions and give answers, not just by the people who support you, but by everyone. I mean, that's half the problem right there. If you're not willing to get in front of a Democrat and get in front of a Republican and say, hey, we want your voice too, we want your vote too, then you've got no chance of winning in the first place. I, I have to agree. I, if, you have my, if I mind to interject, because we here at Harlan's Media, since we live in the state of Illinois, Illinois is one – or at least at one point, had a very tough draconian laws for third-party candidates. Take, for example, if you're a green or libertarian, you had to get at least twenty five to 50,000 signatures just to get on the ballot so that people could vote for you. Whereas if you were a Republican or a Democrat running in the state of Illinois, you need a bare minimum 2,000 or at max 5,000 signatures because, again, the two-party system is really set up here. Now, because of the virus that's recently impacted us, the Illinois Greens and Libertarians did win a very significant uh, court ruling to where where, you know, they, those restrictions were eased up off them. But on another point where you bring up like, hey, if you're a third party candidate and you're running for office, you have to get an online platform. We tried to set up a third party presidential debate with all the third party candidates that were running. And the only candidate that responded to my email and that was open to being part of a debate was Mark Charles, who wasn't affiliated with any party at all. The Greens and Libertarians answers were, we're trying to get on the stage with Trump and Biden. Which was never going to happen in the first place. But again, there, there's such a huge opportunity because online, being online is a much more larger platform. Traditional media has been smearing third parties for years. You got it. And the debates aren't even set up to accept you. Yes. You've got a presidential debate committee that's comprised of just Republicans and Democrats. Those people decide who gets to participate in the presidential debate. Now, that committee bases their decision off five national polls. And who's polling? I believe it was 15% this year in those five national polls. The problem is they choose the polls and the polls they chose only show the Republican and Democratic candidate. So they don't give a choice for, for instance, Howie from the Greens or Joe from the Libertarians, mm -hmm. Brian for, from ASL. They don't give them a potential to be voted for. So they never would have had a chance to show up at the debate simply due to suppression bipartisan suppression, Republicans and Democrats working together. And one of the few things they ever worked together on simply to make sure that they have no other opponent. And why? It's really simplistic if you think about it. The only reason you really care if there's other third parties uh, involved is simply because the more choices people have, the more you're thereby required to actually progress and do a good job. If there are options, you can be fired. People who've been around for 30 or 40 years, you know, the, the Mitches and Pelosi's of the world would actually have to do a great job at what they do or their constituents would say, hey, we've got four or five options. We can try something else and it's not necessarily the evil choice. There, there, there's a lot I want to ask you, and hopefully you can answer this three-part question. So I'll just try and lay it out, and uh, because it's about about your film. Number one, does your film cover about how third parties, whenever they do gain traction, how they get absorbed by the two main party system? And then number two, do you, does your film also talk about how Ross Perot was basically like the last third-party <laughs> presidential candidate to be on a debate stage? Does your film That's go into any sure. detail about the history of third-party co-option by the Republicans and Democrats? You know, 
Well, let's first remind people the fact that they're not the first parties. They're not the originators. You know, Mm -hmm. they're not the Whigs. People have to realize these parties were third parties once. They've already done what we're asking other third parties to do, just simply become relevant. It's not impossible. The Democrats and Republicans done it, and now they're just convincing you otherwise that it can't be done. They're literally saying what we done can't be done. What we've already proven is true is not is just fiction. That's literally what they're going on doing. So to answer your question, yes, we definitely talk about it all the way from the original history of party formations in the country mm-hmm. to you know Ross Perot in uh, 1992 winning 18% of the popular vote. Now, you know, if I was a campaign manager, I would have argued the manner in which he was campaigning because I think he could have won far, far easier. Mm-hmm. It's something that third party campaigns typically fail at today because they kind of anchor towards a popular vote instead of worrying about going to battle for an extensive amount of time in certain states where they potentially could compete and win real electoral votes. But before I get into that, yes, we we definitely, we definitely talk about those aspects. We talk about the Reform Party. Matter of fact, we even talk about a committee that was formed because of that 1992 election in 1994 that is funded annually at an average rate of close to 84 million dollars a year purely to suppress third parties that's literally their job is to spend money creating propaganda that suppresses third party growth and guess what it's not just a democrat or republican it's a bipartisan group that has stayed together for that many years, you know? So they can work together on goals if they give a shit about the goal, but the only time they give a crap about the goal is when it protects job security and when it's not about making America better. So basically we see the extinction of the Federalists and Whigs. They get replaced by the Democrats and Republicans and the Democrats and Republicans want to hold on to that monopoly. And yet we see lack of action from Greens and Libertarians. As much as I do want them to win, again, like the whole plan and strategy has always been, well, maybe enough people will support us when in fact you've got to lay down further groundwork and build political infrastructure. Um, We're running short on time, but I just want to ask, I think for our viewers, just so they can learn more about this film and help out as well. you got an Indiegogo campaign, and I'm looking at the website right now. You've got uh, 165 backers, seven days left. Um, What can our viewers and subscribers do to help you uh, get this film out there? And then where can our viewers and subscribers uh, find this film so they can observe it? Of course, right now with movie theaters being shut down, where, where can they go? To, uh, to, to observe this, because I think it's very fundamentally important that we have this conversation about third parties and really why they're needed. Well, uh, first of all, let me tell you guys who are listening to this that are thinking about maybe being involved or participating, mm-hmm. we're not asking you to contribute for free. If you go to our campaign page, if you go to letspartymovie.com or you go to the, directly to the um, Indiegogo link, which is igg.me slash at slash let's party if you go there you'll find a whole list of perks available you know from from t-shirts to these cool little registration cards we make from people to sign posters all the way to getting your name in the credits to becoming a producer showing up on camera i mean we give a whole list of things that you can actually purchase as opposed to just contribute and donate money and we understand the economy is tough trust me it's tough for all of us heck i'm, I'm a film producer who's asking that who's having to ask for help Mm -hmm. Because I'm stuck in the pandemic, too. I don't have the resources I normally did. Or I would try and fund this myself just to, you know, get this out here because the message is important. So if you can't afford to contribute, realize you can still get involved. Every time you share that campaign, every time you go there and you click on that button and share it to Facebook or Twitter or you tell friends in real life, that is helping spread the awareness of the campaign. And you might know people who contribute. You might know someone who will want to be involved. Heck, we were talking to a couple actual uh, third parties specifically uh, with their national chairs or even the uh, in one particular campaign body about purchasing our uh, advanced screening opportunity. And okay. basically it's an opportunity where we'll come to you and we'll put on a special screening for your, for your own audience and I'll show up and I'll give you a Q and A and talk with your audience. Like we will do whatever it takes to get this film's message out. We need the funds to make the movie so that we're able to provide it for you. Now, the good part is I do work in film. This isn't some 
random guy off the street who decided to make a movie. This is what I do for a living. It's how I pay my bills. And as such, I have relationships with distributors. So this movie, upon completion, will actually be able to be seen widely. This isn't something we're just going to have to pass DVDs to third parties and say, pull them out of your trunk and give them to people. Mm -hmm. We'll get on there. We'll put her on Amazon Prime if I don't have a direct release with, with Netflix. I'll look for broadcast deals for it to be broadcast on television. If we can find, of course, broadcast partners who are willing to share that message, because we do have to understand mm -hmm. most networks, you know, like your CNNs and Foxes out there, eventually the guy at the top or woman at the top has their own political perspective. And so if you have your own political perspective, you're not typically going to want to put the enemy's perspective, you know, or, or someone's going to shake the apple cart, basically. Yeah. yeah, you can't have that, I guess, because, of course, the two-party system not only controls our political system, they control our economy, they control the media. It's always Team Red or Team Blue, unfortunately. You got it. It's our version of China. Exactly. So uh, w one other thing, too, and there's just a couple of things I just wanted to just uh, address real quick before we wrap up this interview. So two-part question. Number one, at least from your point of view, your opinion, because no spoilers for your film. But where, where do you stand on the future of independent parties, third parties um, in this country going past now this election cycle? And then number two, uh, where can our viewers and subscribers find you online and on social media? Is there any uh, websites in particular where our, our viewers and subscribers can learn more about your film and learn more about you as well? Well, uh, to get to the previous uh, question. Um, well, actually, let me get rid of, get get away with uh, knocking out the websites. To, if you want to find my personal fan pages or me in particular, it's simply at Brad Leo Lion, Lion spelled L Y O N. So be it on Facebook at Brad Leo Lion. If it's Twitter at Brad Leo Lion. If you want to go to my personal website, it's BradLeoLion.com. If you want to check out the film's uh, developing website, it's of course uh, Let's Party Movie.com. Um, and my apologies. Having rambled all that, I forgot your question. <laughs> uh, but the first part of the question is, in, at least in your opinion, where do you think the future is for third parties uh, in this country now that we're done with this 2020 election cycle? So I'm probably going to shock a few people here with that with that answer. But if a couple third parties went out and they got a solid campaign manager or an image consultant and sat down with a good team that understands, look, the way we've been campaigning isn't ideal. If we only have $3 million, for instance, and we decide to drive an RV up to Alaska and spend one day there and spend one day in half a dozen states or 40 or 50 states, it's great that you're trying to have everyone's voices heard for five minutes, but you're on a campaign trying to win. So if you get a campaign manager out there who will teach you and hammer in your head that if we go to battle, where there's a possibility, we create possibility. What I mean by that is, actually, when you watch this film, well, you'll come to find out, and we've used some, some fantastic experts in the field uh, for these interviews, is it's not set up in such a structure that you can't win, even from a presidential standpoint. Matter of fact, the Republicans and Democrats have almost created an ideal opportunity. So we know what they know. We know that there's red states and blue states that have 70, 80, 90 percent voting bodies that it's just improbable to win. So you know what they do? They don't typically go there. If if I'm a red, I'm not showing up in those blues. If I'm a blue, I'm not showing up trying to fight in those reds because it's an all or nothing. Mm -hmm. But that actually creates a great opportunity for third parties to potentially fight in because, A, you don't have to win 270, 280 plus electorals if there's multiple contenders. Mm -hmm. It's divided. You have to have the majority. So now when you look at a wider range and a limited number of electoral votes, if you pick the states with a high number of registered independent voters right. and an open minded base of Republican and Democrats, there's numerous states where all you have to do is convert 10 to 15 percent of Democratic and Republican supporters while only winning over 30 to 40 percent max as little as 20% of the independent voters, and you can actually win states. And that's the secret. <laughs> if you actually win states, guess what? You win a presidential election. So instead of going to 50 states when you only have $3 million, if you leverage yourself 
in the states you have a possibility to win. If you have a good platform, if you ask people to listen and you give them something worth listening to, you might be able to win those states. Go fight for them, and all of a sudden you're going to get what's important in this country because the way our government is set up, and that's electoral votes. But you have to be willing to battle for them, not just to battle for tiny little itsy bitsy pieces of a popular vote that does absolutely nothing and barely scares the major parties because you're not actually getting the votes they need for counting. You know, I, I that that is, I'm convinced. Uh, I want to see this film, and I'll be more than happy to do an exclusive uh, Rockfin movie uh, review on our channel as well. Um, I am looking forward to seeing this film in its completion. Bradley O'Lion, we invite you to be back on our show uh, with any kind of follow-ups for your film. Uh, thank you so much for being on our show and uh, talking about this uh, project that you're working on. It's something I believe in. I'm a strong supporter of third parties. We need to have a true parliamentary system. And now more than ever, we need to upend this system. But don't worry, Democrats and Republicans, you're included in it too. You can be part of the conversation. But we need we to really start having a true direct democracy. You got it. You know, we, we want everyone's voice, just like we're so thankful for people like yourself giving us the opportunity to spread the word, giving us the opportunity to reach some of your listeners who might actually support that campaign and give us the strength to be successful. But that, that's all most of these third parties want. They're, they're not wanting to just jam their opinion down your throat. They're wanting people to have a voice, a voice that most of them didn't have when they were traditional voters. A lot of these third party people came from Republican and Democratic parties and said, you know what? They don't really care about what we need. They're just caring about our votes and to keep good them alive. And that's a good note to end it on. Bradley O'Lion, he's the director of Let's Party. Let's ch let's try and get this movie out there and actually have this conversation about third parties. This is Kit Cabello with Hard Lens Media. Peace to you guys, and let us all do what we can to build a better future. <laughs>